So this is the first episode of Off Meta. I want to say thank you to Hush for being the very first guest. It means a lot to me. I'm not going to lie, guys and girls. I was very nervous at the beginning of this podcast. I definitely say um a lot, and I apologize from the get-go. I hope that I can improve as we go forward just because this is so brand new to me as well. I have a this thing in my head of what I want Off Meta to be, and it's just kind of scary to do it you know the first time so i just want to apologize and say thank you again to hush it was absolutely amazing talking to him and i hope you guys enjoy before we dive too deep into the uh, topics at hand um hush if you just want to give us a little bit of background info about yourself um you know what you do in terms of content creation and uh you know if you stream uh, feel free to plug in your your social media right here too um so people can find you follow you i'm sure if they're listening to this right now they already know who you are um but just in case people come back for sure yeah no i, I love plugging my stuff um <laughs> so uh yeah i'm a destiny creator uh, i imagine a lot of people watching this are going to be destiny viewers so you might know who i am but if you don't uh, yeah, I create Destiny content on YouTube. Uh, you can find me. Uh, I actually have no idea what my YouTube URL, URL is because it's so random. But uh, if you type in my name, you will find me. Uh, and I tweet sometimes. Uh, you can find me there at Blame Hush. And uh, that's pretty much it for my socials. No streaming? Yeah, well, oh. I want to return. I'm planning to return, but that's not set in stone just yet. But again, if you want to be one of my uh you know uh new viewers on twitch for whenever that does return you can just again type in hush you'll find me when that returns uh i don't know just yet i love when people put their their youtube urls out there and it's something from when you know they were like 12 years old playing Modern yeah. warfare 2 and it's like some random like uh, exactly, it has nothing yeah. to do with like you know hush or anything it's like some crazy random name and it's got like well, one two I three <laughs> yeah, I think I think mine is uh, Hush Slays, but every time I go on my channel, it never says that. It's it's just like user and then a bunch of letters and numbers. So I I give up. I, give I have up. no idea what goes on with YouTube anymore. That's, yeah, I know. Trust me, I uploaded a video the other day and it was like I had eighty people that were like, "This is not in my sub box at all." And I was like, "Oh, that's cool. Good to know." For you know, like this kind of thing, I'll I'll try to figure out how to. You know. Oh yeah, YouTube's great. Yeah, it feels good to be a YouTuber in 2020. Mm. It's really safe. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, actually, on that subject, when did you start taking, you know, content creation as a whole, like, I guess, serious in terms of mm -hmm. what you were uploading, how often you were uploading, you know, like kind of going from, yeah. um, because you did montages and stuff. That's that's kind of how I True. knew of you. Um, and yeah, I think yeah. that there's a huge difference in, you know, working on a montage, something that takes months of time to mm -hmm. uploading, you know, way more frequently, uh, frequently. Um, so when did you kind of take that jump and become a full-time content creator? Well, uh... I sort of took it very seriously, very quickly. Uh, the first video that I ever uploaded, uh, people are going to get so confused because my Destiny 1 videos are all uh, privated now. Uh, we can touch on that later. Um, <laughs> but my first ever video that I did was a montage. Um, I spent a month on it. So from September when Destiny launched uh, to October is when my channel, you know, started. Um, when I started taking it very seriously, I was uploading. I mean, the quality of the videos were very, very poor. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I really do cringe at the thought of those videos. It's really bad. Uh, but everyone starts somewhere, you know. Um, but no, yeah, I took it quite seriously. I uh, had all my stuff because I did do videos before Destiny, so I knew what I was doing. I had some experience, and then um, I, I say I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I took it. Um, as a, as a, you know, it, like it transformed into a job mm -hmm. where I was earning enough money. That didn't happen until a few years later. But um, I was very passionate and very serious about it from the very beginning, mm -hmm. uh, to be quite honest with you. I think a lot of people start out with doing content creation as a hobby. But mm -hmm. I think it's something you really have to be passionate about to, you know, either oh, continue course, yeah. doing it. Because it's such a an in-depth 
hobby. You know, there's so much involved, and you're constantly learning, constantly yeah. tweaking things. Um, it's it's one of a kind for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, the way that I do my videos now, I mean, I've been doing it for six years, yeah. uh, which is scary, um, and that's just destiny. Yeah. Um, but the way that I do my videos now is completely different to how I did them, you know, three, four years ago. Um, you know, everything evolves over time. Um, the quality of videos across the entire website, yeah. you, you know, changes. And you, you kind of have to, uh, you know, learn new things and become more advanced in yourself mm -hmm. or you get left behind yeah you it, have to it's quite sad but yeah you have to stay with uh what's relevant i suppose so like destiny one was in a very special i guess you know in terms of content creation because you could do the gun mm. reviews and there were so yeah. many guns, you know, from the rare to exotic and even the white weapon challenge, things like that. It was always mm -hmm. easy to to make content, especially, you know, with new DLCs and stuff. There was always a yeah. scramble to find the new god gun. And yeah. Destiny was, I feel like, really unique because in Call of Duty, um, you know, everybody just wants to see, like, high-kill games. And then, like, Halo doesn't have loadouts, per se. Uh, yeah. So Destiny was always such a weird game where there was a plethora of content to create, and sure, I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much all my content was. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did start off doing a lot of uh, loot-based videos. That's what Des. That's what I think. Yeah. What Destiny started on the YouTube scene was loot videos, mm -hmm. engrams, packages, the package um, openings, exactly, yeah, stuff like that, and it was. Um, I don't really know of another game that did that. I mean, you had F FIFA, I suppose, but that's mm -hmm. different. Yeah. You know, you're paying for those things. This is stuff that people have earned in game and it's stuff, you know, um, like, like weapons and armor and really mm -hmm. cool rare stuff. I know um, people always compare Destiny to Borderlands, but, you mm -hmm. know, Borderlands 2 came out. So, like, it came out before Destiny. There wasn't really a YouTube scene for that type of thing yet. Um, right. It's just crazy to see how much YouTube and then Twitch and all those other you know content creation sites have changed gaming videos, yeah. and it's it's insane to think about where we were in Destiny One, and mm -hmm. then how that game has changed so much to Destiny Two, and how that game has changed so much in just terms of how people create content. Um, I know you talked about how you used to do the, the package openings and loot videos. What type of videos would you, I guess, categorize uh, the type of content you make now? Uh, well, now I uh, I don't. It, this is the thing. <laughs> I don't really know what my content is. Yeah. Um. It's it's not reviews. It's not. It, it's a lot of random stuff. It's not like. Um, Say, for example, you've got Fallout plays, mm -hmm. okay? He'll go super in-depth, talk about the perks, uh, masterworks, what they really do, how beneficial they are, et cetera, et cetera. For me, when something new comes out, I'll use it. I'll play with it in the Crucible. Mm -hmm. I don't care how well I do. Uh, that's one thing that's changed. Back in Destiny 1, um, I refused to post videos yeah. if uh, I didn't hit a clip yep. in the video or if I didn't have like a 40 KD or hit a we run out of medals. So I've definitely be like become more casual, but I wouldn't say like, um, I wouldn't say the gun reviews. Uh, I, I, I definitely start the video by going over the weapon very mm -hmm. briefly, but I think it's more about uh, the, the entertainment yeah. is what I really aim for in my videos for sure. You, you, you have a concept built around like a weapon or a setup that mm -hmm. you're going to use. And then yeah. it doesn't have to be the, it's not a God gun or anything like that. You just go into the crucible and have fun. Yeah. Exactly. I think, yeah, yeah. I think that that's a, I agree. I, back in the day and you know, everybody that I played with that did YouTube and stuff, it always had to be like, if I didn't drop 30 kills, it's what is the point in uploading this? Yeah. Um, I think exactly. people, would use it in titles and stuff and try to get more views and everything and it's it's I mean, definitely still involved. to this day i see it in cod you yeah. know um like uh you know oh, 50 plus kills mm -hmm. with the new m4 or something and yeah. uh in destiny you i mean i know frostbolt does it but frostbolt is uh yeah cracked yeah he's not human um 
but I think it's only him that does that. He he does have his personality mm -hmm. um, based content on Twitch for sure, and obviously still on Twitch he he plays very very well. Um, but yeah, his YouTube channel is I would say definitely primarily like taking a gun mm -hmm. and just going off. Yeah, his, uh, his whereas setups. for me it's the complete opposite. It's like even if a gun's good. You know, or it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the gun's good or bad. I will just use it if it's new, if it's hot, if people are looking for it and interested to see how it plays out or whatever. I'll use it. I'll have a good time. And um, as long as I'm having a good time, that, in my opinion, is what makes content good. If people can see that you're having a good time and you're laughing and you're cheerful and happy, that reflects well in the content. And I think people really vibe with you uh, when they can see that. I really think that you have to go down a deep, dark hole if you do the extreme reactions and being upset mm. and slamming your desk um, yeah. and things like that in terms of, I guess, the negative sign of the content creation. Because for you, you're just having fun. That's positive. Yeah. I think there's a huge middle ground where it's people are just like, you're complaining and crying and yeah. this isn't funny you know you have to really go in like tyler one territory where you're throwing your keyboard <laughs> yeah. and stuff um, yeah i get that <laughs> it's weird it's very weird um mm. but sure since you started taking it super serious and doing it full-time has your life changed dramatically since that point or is it kind of still the same are you you uh, know has life just well, changed I, 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 well, I, I don't go outside anymore. Of course. Um, I sleep in a lot. Um, that's, I mean, before I started doing YouTube, I mean, I, I was at college um, and I was um, on a sports course. I was going to the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, near enough, every single day that I was at college, I was learning about the human body, the an anatomy. I was playing sports, basketball, volleyball, football, whatever. I was just so active. And then... Um, I actually finished college, um, in May of 2014 and that was my second year. And I was like, you know what? I don't know what I want to do. Um, I don't want to do another year at college. We'll see what happens. Then Destiny came out and then, yeah, my life basically went from being super active, yeah. <laughs> to, uh, you know, going out all the time, lifting weights, doing ex many exercises all, all day, every day, mm -hmm. uh, to sitting, sitting at a computer and, uh, and uh, yeah, playing video games, recording it, um, and all that. But I, I definitely do prefer this. Truly, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's weird because I had that, that strong passion for like I, I wanted to be a personal trainer. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I wanted to help people achieve their weight goals and you know, um, bodybuilding and stuff like that. And then just within the space of I don't know, nine, ten months, I was like, I, I want to be a YouTuber. Um, and then. Yeah, so quite a quite a drastic change, really. Yeah, I, I think that I'm that college time of your life is such a important time because you. Yeah. I, I knew people that changed their major four times in four years. They're just like, I don't mm. want to do this. I want to do this. I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Um, yeah. Have you started going back to the gym at all? Have you focused on, you know, yeah. staying healthy yeah. now after you had? How long was that that break between stopping? Um, from going to the gym well i actually i, I still went mm -hmm. um i had more of a reason to go to the gym because the, the, the gym was actually at the college so mm. whilst i was at college I, I you know the gym was right there yeah um when i finished i immediately noticed that i was going less um but i would say that i i still kept going throughout 2014 and then at the start of 2015, I realized, okay, I'm gaining subs. I'm getting a little bit of a viewership. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say gradually over time, I did start going less and less. And then it got to the point where I didn't want to go to the gym. So I brought the gym to me. Uh, I had stuff uh, built at home, like a home gym. Um, and then over time, I, I just stopped altogether, really. Um, I just focused and I, I do feel like balance is key. Uh, yeah. And that's one thing that I that, that I did struggle with. I basically threw out all the hard work that I did yeah. for, for, you know, working at the gym and doing all that and just solely focused on on uh, creating content. 
I feel like recently there's been a huge push by, you know, at least content creators. Um, I know you've seen like MTash and Blessius and everybody posting yeah. their workout pictures <laughs> yeah, and the stuff. Picks, yeah. And then Glad is ripped. You know, that dude's mm. huge. And these are people with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of viewers and followers yes. on Twitter and they're seeing this stuff. And I think you know, you go through the the replies and people are super supportive and saying that they're getting back into the gym and stuff. Yeah. Personally, I started going back um in December. I was kinda like you where I, I worked at the gym at college and I was yeah. obsessed with, you know, working out, playing basketball and having a certain um image for myself and then you know, after college, it was kind of like, all right, uh, I went, you know, probably like two to three times a week to Planet Fitness, and then it kind of fell off, and then now I've really gotten back into trying to be healthy, and I, I think that it's super important. I think it definitely changes oh, sure, your, yeah. your mindset um, in terms of the balance part and being happy, and I, I feel like it's a, you know, a huge circle. If you feel good, yeah, you make good exactly. content. Exactly. It's all about balance, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't you just can't devote your life to doing just one thing because you're going to burn out. You're going to get very bored. Yeah. Uh, that is something that I am struggling with, uh, which is why, uh, I mean, as we're recording this, I haven't uploaded a video in, I think, almost two weeks, mainly mm-hmm. because there's not, I don't really have any ideas for content, but also because I'm trying to do other things. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually got very lucky. There's a gym literally right around the corner from my house. It's a five minute walk, um, opposed to, you know, taking the bus 20 minutes and then walking to the gym, which takes about 10 and then doing that on the way back as well. So it's just a five minute walk around. I've got a gym very close to me. Um, and yeah, seeing Glad and all these guys, you know, M. Tash and Blessius. I mean, I think Blessius is um, pretty new to it. Mm-hmm. I think it was like Kakis and yeah. uh, M. Tash and all them and then Blessius. So it's super cool to see Blessius get involved. I think Glad also uh he did some sort of uh like 30 day challenge or something for his community like yeah. a, a gym based weight loss yeah. something uh which is awesome to see so it, it's 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 great to see that creators are promoting um you know physical health because yeah. it, it's crucial i mean you you just cannot sit on your ass um playing video uh, video games all day it is fun um and some of us you know are lucky enough to do it for a job but yeah, it's, it's all about balance, for sure. I think it's, you know, something to be said. You look at a lot of your um, eSports athletes, quote-unquote, and none of them, <laughs> I mean, there's a few, obviously, that are that might be overweight, but, you know, going to the gym and keeping your mind sharp and your body fit is huge to them. Uh, I think oh, that yeah. Th- I think that that says something um, in terms of, you know, your gaming lifestyle and your your I, I guess IRL lifestyle um it all mm-hmm. comes together in some aspect yeah, for sure. um but going on from that I guess we'll we have a couple of questions from the community on Twitter uh, that I think awesome will shed some light on content creation and something that you might have to deal with I guess on a daily basis you just talked about you know how you mm-hmm. feel about not uploading a video for two weeks I think that yeah you know, a lot of people do boo-hoo, cry for me, YouTuber, your life is so hard. You know, you get to sit and play yeah. video games all day. You don't worry about it. You don't have to pay taxes. You know, it's not a big <laughs> deal. Uh, I, I don't think people really, especially even if you do it in a small capacity, you don't really comprehend what it's like to fully devote yourself to, you know, yeah. just yeah. one you, game, you, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and you don't truly know what it's like until you do it. It's one yeah. of those things, for sure. Um, and then I think that there's a you know a headspace um, that you have to be in to constantly be able to pump out quality content. But our first question comes from Jeff. Uh, he says, "How do you motivate yourself through tough times, IRL or through Destiny content droughts?" Ooh, okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, um, I don't I don't necessarily do anything uh, in particular. I I guess what I do, and this is something that I'm trying to work on, is I struggle to avoid 
feeling down mm. but then when i get there i'm like okay this is what i've got to do so that's something that i've got to work on but what i do is um the whole youtube twitch content creating thing you're very isolated um i mean i, I was lucky to have crystal live with me for for six months uh she went back in uh at the end of january so mm -hmm. i've been you know without her so it, you're you're very isolated so one thing that is very important is uh irl go see friends yeah uh go see family uh don't be confined to you know this, these four walls don't keep yourself uh locked away um and uh i mean other than that i you know i i, I don't really do much mm -hmm. i just uh, i know that when i do get down there's things that I've got to do, you know? I mean, I have friends that I can talk to on Discord and, and hang out with, but yes. um, I mean, we're, we're humans. Yep. You, you can't rely on just hearing people's voices and talking back to them and, mm -hmm. and playing video games. You have to have human contact. So I would say the most crucial thing is, uh, you, you know, I mean, if you've got a car or if, if, if there's a bus you can take, just, you know, go see your parents or go see your friends and just, you know, keep that connection. I feel like, I feel like that's very important. Do you ever... So I know some people use the gym as, um, mm -hmm. oh you know, yeah. If you're angry or depressed, they they go to the gym. Yeah, and, yeah, definitely. You know, science and people who are way smarter than myself, um, Same. talk Same. about <laughs> how you know, like chemicals get released and you you feel better. Mm -hmm. I I can attest Endorphins, to that. Yeah. yeah, I definitely feel mm -hmm. better after going to the gym. Um, oh yeah, Is that yeah, something yeah. that you you look to do if you yeah you wake up and yeah, you're like you, ugh. Yeah, I mean, sure, you get that uh, testosterone boost. You, mm -hmm. you, you know, your body releases endorphins, and you feel great. Um, uh, I hate cardio. I uh, <laughs> whenever I do cardio, I'm the opposite. I just want to die. Yeah. Um, but going to the gym, um, sh that is actually a great one. Yeah, going to the gym, lifting weights, getting you know pumped up. Um, it's it's a great feeling. You know, your body releases endorphins. I think it's endorphins. I hope I don't have to be corrected. I hope I hope I'm right. But um, no, yeah, the gym is another one. That's that's very good. Yeah. Is your diet? I know people when they think of gamers and stuff, their Gatorade, diet is yeah, Mountain Dew, yeah, chocolate, Doritos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we live in a time now where you know you have Uber Eats and DoorDash and all these other yeah. companies that can bring you it's bad mm -hmm. yeah like McDonald's and stuff but do I mean they can also bring you you know I guess, yeah healthy <laughs> healthy food but do you stress on what you're eating or do you go to a grocery store and, and well uh what I've recently started doing uh and I'm sure you and uh, many people watching this uh, will have heard of keto. Mm -hmm. uh, Glad is, you know, he uh, talks a lot about it. Yeah. Um, I recently started keto on Monday. Uh, so right now it's Saturday. So it's been about, you know, five, six days. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, keto is, is very, very good for you. Uh, I mean, Glad is completely shredded. Yeah. Uh, I will get there one day. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we would all like that, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I was really bad. Uh, I, I would, I'm what you would like to call a stress eater. Uh, so if something doesn't go my way, mm -hmm. um, like, I don't know, let's say I'm playing Destiny 2 and skill based matchmaking kicks my ass mm -hmm. and I get pissed off and all that, I, I'll be like, oh, screw it. I'm just going to go order a takeaway and just binge watch Netflix. So, um, but as of late, I've been doing very well. Crystal's pushed me. Mm -hmm. uh, she refuses to let me, you know, eat that <laughs> way anymore. So, um, yeah, so for me right now, it's a combination of, you know, doing keto, eating well, and having a gym just around the corner is fantastic. So I think the biggest takeaway from that is bungee. Your skill-based matchmaking is forcing people to You're become me obese. Fat. <laughs> yes, exactly. Stop it. Remove it, please. <laughs> Uh, or health's sake. <laughs> yes. Um, our second question comes from Chloe on Twitter. She says, when you find yourself in a negative mind frame, do you go? Do you have any go-to remedies or activities, and we kind of already talked about it, to help pull yourself out of it, or is it something you tend to wait out? Um, and the wait out part, I do feel that self-reflection and mindfulness is important to mm -hmm. some people because it is a passing emotion um, you know, of course. we talk about playing games and stuff, and if it's not going your way, you're just like, you you actually remove yourself 
from the game, even though you said mm-hmm. you were going to go binge eat and watch Netflix, but you've removed yourself from a, a negative environment, atmosphere, and yeah. aside from the eating, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, watching shows on Netflix and stuff like that, but... Um, Eight it, hours straight. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <Not> leaving the bed. <laughs> man, I've the amount of anime I've watched. <laughs> it's bad. I but, feel um, it. I feel it. Um, and honestly, do you find yourself? And maybe this can be discussed, you know, in in regards to your past too. But have you ever been in a lot of negative, you know, times of your life because of content creation and gaming and all that stuff? And um, do you deal with it differently now as you did then, uh, you know, with education and mm-hmm. finding what works for you? Um, do you find yourself in, in that negative mind frame as much now as you did back then? Um, I, I would say that I've, I've certainly improved. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, yeah, I mean, it comes and goes as it probably always will do. You know, uh, I have been... Um, I have battled uh, depression for, I would say, four years now. I think I got diagnosed in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, back then, I was very stubborn, and I, I refused to believe that it was a thing. Um, they offered medication. I said no. Um, and it, w- it, it would always put me in a, in a in a mind frame in a mind state where i just felt really low yeah and i would just wait it out a constant there was, no, there, was there was yeah there was no like okay what can i do to avoid getting into this position i can i was just really stupid and i was just like well it's gonna happen mm-hmm. let's let it happen and then wait it out but obviously that's a terrible thing don't do it um because unfortunately there are people out there that it also do suffer with it and you know it takes them to an even darker place than, than others mm-hmm. so the most important thing is obviously not letting yourself get there yeah um i i mean remedies i uh i would say the things that have helped me the most is uh working out mm-hmm. and dieting mm-hmm. i feel like i mean what's the saying a healthy body is a healthy mind yeah something like that yeah so um if if you're gonna sit there and just eat crap all day and just wear the same clothes over and over that's gonna put you in a mega in a negative mindset Mm -hmm. so yeah definitely eating better um working out has helped a lot uh gaming (laughs) gaming it can be stressful you know you can have bad games and stuff like that but um gaming with friends is also great um but um yeah so that's one thing that I've definitely improved on, mm-hmm. uh, and I refuse to do that anymore. And I hate myself for doing that because back then it, it wasn't just like I'm going to sit here, I'm going to tank it, I'm going to take it on, you know, and I'm just going to deal with it, and then it'll pass. Yeah. It was, you know, it would also affect not just myself but people around me. People were, you know, sick of me. Yeah. I was so uh, short-tempered and all that, and um. It took me so long to realize that hey it's not just affecting me it's affecting others yeah um and every time i reached that point it was bad so over the years i've ju- i've just i've done as uh, all i can really to avoid hitting that um that spot which is uh which i'm very proud of really and you also sought out help i think that that's a, a yeah. really important takeaway that a lot of people are you know they have such negative connotations about going to a doctor or therapist now. Sure. Um, I do think that recently there's been a lot of positive reinforcement from content creators and just, Mm -hmm. you know, the world in general about seeking help and being in a safe place where you can, you can talk about how you're feeling and you, especially males, you know, it's very hard for, for yeah, males to, I get that. Yeah, so I think that's a really important takeaway. Also, I would like to apologize. That was a question from Hostel Galaxy. Chloe's is actually the next one. So um, <laughs> okay, and this this might be one of the million dollar questions. How do you balance oh playing Destiny for fun and playing for content creation? Or when Ooh. you're not playing Destiny, what other games do you play? And that's a good one. You can kind of go into if you want to break it down. You know, like how many 
how many hours of your day are actually spent gaming because I think people assume that you, you play at a high skill level too. Um, you say you're more casual now, but I think mm. with the the time that you've put in and even in your videos, you can tell that the you have a very high skill ceiling. Um, mm-hmm. So how does that... I, we've talked about expectations already and you being what you define as a casual when you go in, but mm-hmm. yeah. does it does it weigh on you? Do you put, you know, 16, 18 hours a day into, you know, Kovacs so you're you're cracked when you go into <laughs> Destiny and you're just clicking, clicking heads and everything, or is it a lot less than that? Honestly, um, I mean, that, that, is, that is a really good question. Um, so as of right now, uh, I, I don't play Destiny as much, mm-hmm. but on a on a normal day, let's say when the new season arrives, um, I will spend, let's say, two hours recording a video, maybe about six to eight hours editing that. Mm-hmm. Then once I'm done, I'm back on Destiny and I'm playing. Um, it's nonstop. I don't really find time for other games. So for me, Destiny for a while now, and I, I kind of hate it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what re- I, I really don't know what to do about it, but for a while now, Destiny has felt more like a job, yeah, than you know an activity that you know that pledges me that yeah. I enjoy. Um, so again, like talking about about balance, I don't really have that. Um, it is literally I will record a video and get right back on. Uh, there's no breathing space there's no uh I, I feel like that's why i actually burn out quite a bit mm-hmm. i don't know what other creators do uh i would love to know because uh people like glad and all those they yeah. stream every day yeah there's no content they're streaming yeah uh they haven't slept in 12 hours still streaming um so no yeah that's a very good question i i i definitely do uh struggle to balance balance it all out um which is something that i i hopefully hopefully i will improve on but for now it's it's more of a i mean yeah i would say for the past few years destiny has definitely felt more like a uh, like a job over a hobby do you feel like you're wasting time if you go play a different game like if you want to hop on halo yeah. or just yeah hang out? exactly like uh i mean you've got uh, doom eternal coming mm-hmm. out which comes out a week after the next season goes live. And I, I've been waiting for the game and I want to play it. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, of all the dates they chose, you know, why? Why a week after the new season? Because all I want to do is keep playing. Because the more that I play Destiny, the more stuff I unlock, the more yeah. guns I unlock. I might get the new exotics if I'm lucky enough. You know, you've got trials. Yep. So I do feel like, yeah, if I go play another game, I'm wasting time. I'm sure um, a lot that of is why that I burn way. out because it's just destiny. Yeah, it's just destiny, 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 and I do feel like I've missed out on a lot of games over the last few years. And people classify destiny as a lifestyle game because of like you know all the activities and things that you named that you can do, mm-hmm. but it's not on that same level as a World of Warcraft or you know a, a real MMO RPG yeah. type of thing. It's it just doesn't have that that same amount of content where you can literally play 16 hours a day and yeah accomplish stuff and it be unique i think that going forward they've you know reiterated that they want to have a, a better focus on that aspect and stuff so we'll see what happens um in terms of like destiny 2 and destiny 3 forever i think <laughs> is you know it, that game lasts for five years but i think that for a lot of content creators, they have to make their own content at this point. The yeah, the donating Ooh. event recently, you know, <laughs> it gets ridiculous. Yeah. I can't imagine what people thought from like other communities looking like. What are they talking about? And like yeah, stocks invest, and everything. I know. Donate. It's like what is going on? It's it's definitely not been for me. I mean, that goes back to when I said I have not uploaded. Yeah. For nearly two weeks because I I mean what 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 can I do? Yeah. You know, Destiny 2 right now, unfortunately, is something that I don't enjoy. Other people do, and it's great. And it's, it's it's awesome to see the community come together. But for me, Destiny isn't about, you know, stonks and, and spreadsheets. That's just not, that's just not for me. Yeah, it's not fun. And, no. Uh, 
there are people obviously it was a good time a lot of memes and stuff you know i saw some yeah. some bernie memes out there and everything <laughs> but i i completely feel you it's been i think better for i think a lot of people have spread out uh into other games because of yeah. the, the lack of content and that's not a bad thing either i think that keeping oh, exactly, life fresh yeah. variety you know the spice of life or whatever yeah, I mean, you've got to remember that Destiny 2 is not the only game out there. If you're, you know, if you're burnt out, if you're not enjoying what's going on in Destiny 2 right now, mm-hmm. you, you know, go play another game yeah. and come back when there's content. Because Destiny 2, I mean, they've said it, Destiny 2 is an evolving game, right? What's in the game right now, that's not Destiny 2 for the next, you know, year or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, and it's, it, is, it is kind of ridiculous because uh, Bungie will, or, you know, a dev example will tweet something and uh people will reply to that dev and just say horrible yeah. things and i'm sat there reading like the game's evolving this is just here for now yeah what's coming next you might enjoy yeah you know destiny 2 isn't the only game you know go go do something else so i've uh I, i've currently been playing overwatch it is um the saltiest experience of my life mm-hmm. um but uh, at the same time, it's quite fun. I do play with friends, um, and I'm just sort of taking that break because right now, like I said, it, Destiny 2, the donating and investing, it's not for me. I, I completely understand that. I think that, and you appreciate games more when you're you're able to play other things. There's so many people mm, that have missed out yeah. on, like, God of War and stuff like that where... Dude, I don't have a PlayStation. I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah, and, but... I can't play it. And there's so many just really well-made, even, like, free-to-play Switch titles. There, mm-hmm. There's so many fun things for you to do. You shouldn't feel yeah. obligated to, I don't know, pledge your allegiance and time yeah. to one <laughs> single game nobody yeah you know sd2 is my life yeah. i refuse to do anything else yeah i mean i brand <laughs> loyalty and all that other stuff we could talk about for hours and hours and why people feel yeah. that way but i don't think i don't think people want to listen to that on this version of the podcast <laughs> but um so we'll wrap up you know we're we're about hitting that that end time so um mm-hmm something i just want to get your opinion on real quick is i was listening to the planet not the planet destiny the destiny community podcast with brofish and she spoke about how playing destiny and the community literally saved her life when she was in a negative okay. mindset and recently yeah. the world health organization uh recognized the diagnosis of gaming disorder which you know, you okay. you're addicted to playing Fortnite and stuff. Right. You're just, okay. You're just in that that you come home from school, you get on the game, you you neglect yeah, other you're things. You know, doing your homework. You just mm-hmm. yeah, you just want to play games. You just yeah. Cranking nineties, and uh, <laughs> they say that it has ties to anxiety and depression, and it's weird to see so many different viewpoints, um, and even other you know, journals of science and medicine say that gaming helps relieve anxiety and depression. Do you think that that's, uh, in terms of it being a negative impact on people's lives or a positive impact, where where do you fall in that? Do you think that... I think I would, I think I'd place myself somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a firm believer of uh, everything in moderation if you overdo anything you're gonna there's gonna be a negative side effect to it um i think i can totally see 100 percent that the gaming does good mm-hmm. um and it can help i mean there's so many people that that, that that i know i have a few friends i won't say who just to keep them anonymous um who uh they're not in a good place in their life and they don't want to you know they, or it's, it's they they struggle so much that they can't even bring themselves to leave the house um and whenever they try to do something like that mm-hmm. they are a nervous wreck they really really struggle and it's really sad to see it but then gaming for them has been like well it's like you escape into this world yep 
Um, whether it's a multiplayer game or a single player game, you escape into it, you put yourself literally into the game, um, and you're experiencing this completely different world with all these different characters, and um, that is sort of like their safe space. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Um, it's like real world bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, putting myself into Monster Hunter or uh, The Witcher, you know, it's good. I feel connected to these characters and to this world, and I can truly feel relaxed. So, so I do, I get that. Mm -hmm. But I also think that, um, that I, it's, it's, I, I don't want to offend anyone. And I don't want to say, I don't want to word something mm -hmm. uh, poorly. Uh, I just feel like gaming, it can't be everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just feel like it, everything in moderation. That's just how I see everything, really. You do too much of one thing and you neglect everything else. There can be there can be problems. So, but I I can definitely yeah I can definitely see how gaming does good hundred percent. I I look at it, and it, it goes to the parents, in my opinion, especially if we're talking about you know younger people. But it's like forcing your kid to play year round mm -hmm. sports um, and yeah. putting that body through all that stress. Again, it goes into moderation. You you can't. You can't solely yeah. focus on one thing and expect to be healthy or... Yeah, I, I feel like parents of this generation haven't really got with the times. Yeah. Uh, because when they were kids, it was, you know, go out and get muddy and come back with scratches and, uh, you know, dirty clothes and all that. Go play football yeah. and dive in the mud and all that. Um, but now, you know, we've got all this technology... Um, I mean, my parents don't know anything. My my mom mm -hmm. doesn't really know what I do. Yeah, <laughs> she just knows that I play video games. Um, and then um, I've got a here's a good example. I have uh, my my uh, my little my little sister, my adopted sister, who uh, recently uh, she got diagnosed with uh, ADD and autism, mm. and um, she's only about seven. Um, and a lot of the times when I see her, she'll be sat there on a phone yeah. playing games or an uh, 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 iPad, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like she's in, she's literally in her own world. Yeah. She's, you know, stress-free. She's not anxious about anything. Uh, and then when she goes to school, she just keeps to herself. Um, that's who she is. She gets in. She does all the work. She does really well. She's, she's excelling in everything. Um, and then she comes home and... You know, she's allowed to, to keep to herself because that's um, that's literally, you know, gaming doing good for her. But um, it's not like she's, you know, on the on the, on the yeah. iPhone or whatever for 10 hours a day. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's her stress reliever, I yeah. guess you could say, to keep her relaxed and everything like that because of, you know, what she's recently been uh, diagnosed with. So And that's, you know, she's, you know, super young. And in terms of mm -hmm. the older generations, I had somebody actually DM me on Twitter saying super random and i guess it's because of my profile picture being an old man but they said <laughs> super random but i'm studying for a class i read about how gaming can help elderly with hand-eye coordination and brain function look into it and i was like oh i'm that old you know it's like <laughs> oh no it's just some random person but yeah. that's that's all you know you see all these brain games and stuff on your iphone and people playing yeah. words with friends and stuff uh, I think yeah. that th there is a huge demographic of people that benefit from some type of, of gaming, especially in today's age where you're constantly the bombarded show, yeah. and there's so much stuff around you. The world is so busy yeah. and kind of negative right now. Uh, we don't, we don't want to get yeah. too into that, but it's, it's great to have an escape. You talk about Monster Hunter. You go into that game and there's no judgment you know you got a yeah a little cat that runs around with you it doesn't matter what you look like or yeah, you know anything exactly. like that it's or S skyrim everybody goes back to skyrim because you literally oh yeah can just be in this world yeah it's a huge world there's so many people to speak to um so many things to do uh and yeah people really do get lost in it i just i really do wish that um parents you know uh, uh would realize mm -hmm. that 
the way things work now is completely different to when they were kids. I, I, I do feel like, and I know this for a fact, there's a lot of parents out there that see gaming as, you know, oh, you're just sitting on your ass and yeah. you're just, you know, playing this video game when you could be doing something valuable with your time. And mm -hmm. it's like, gaming isn't a sin, you know? It's not a bad thing. And there's, there's so many good things that it does. Um, I mean, for crying out loud, my, my mom got um, a Nintendo Switch uh for <laughs> for my little sister and uh she, she she's in the foster system so there's my little sister and then there's uh this other uh uh younger girl as well mm -hmm. and uh, so she got her she got them a switch for christmas and they've only recently just set it up and uh i had to do it because they don't know no. what a hdmi cable is yeah <laughs> you know they don't know how like oh so how do i put it on the tv and i was like oh you just you know use this cable yeah like, okay so how do i get to it you you turn the TV on. You know, it's so simple, but they have no idea. Yeah. They have no idea. So I feel like, you know, they things need to change in that in that area. Yeah. I think. It, it's because once you're an adult, unless you constantly seek education, you know, you're not going to go back to school or anything like that. You, you're not put in an yeah. environment where you're learning, you know, because kids today with computers and stuff, it, it's insane. Even... You know, yeah. I, I work at a community college and, you know, I'm I'm a decade older than most of the people there now. And mm -hmm. what those students do in like the computer science class is insane. I, I or how, um, you know, these 13 year old kids on Twitter are using <laughs> Photoshop and After Effects. Yeah. When I was like in college, it was like super cool to make a ball of water. And then the things that they're making <laughs> yeah. now, like full-fledged Star Wars movies, and st it's insane. Yeah. Technology. It, 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 yeah, technology's come a long way. I mean, um, I've seen, um, I don't know if you, how deep into the whole Star Wars community you are, but mm -hmm. there's a Star Wars U uh, YouTuber, uh, Star Wars Theory, who literally made his own movie. Um, and it, it looked like it was made by, you know, Disney. Yeah. It's insane. And it's like, it's like, how, how have we come this far? And there, yeah, there are literally, uh, I, I know so many people who are like 13, 14, 15, and they edit montages. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, when I was that age. Yeah. <laughs> what, like, <laughs> Going in the I, Modern Warfare 2. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. I just played 360 games and um, I had a Walkman. Yeah. <laughs> just, it, yeah. It's crazy. Like I'm, I feel ancient now. I really do. Everyone's so advanced and I'm just uh, trying doing to, my thing. You're trying to keep up. Trying to keep up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good point to wrap up. Hush, I just want to say thank you uh, for being the first guest. Mm, thank you, my dude. It means the world to me and I'm sure to a lot of people that are going to listen to this that are your fans. Yeah, that, it was fun. It was a pleasure. That that want to see a behind-the-curtain look at you know some of the things that you think about on a daily basis, honestly. So mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you, and um, I hope you have a, a good rest of the day, man. Thank you, dude. All right.